Hello everyone, I'm Wookie and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. And we're here for some Shonen Archive. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire known souls to watching every single Shonen Jump anime that is available to us in some form in English. Till till now, until the very end of time itself, in memoriam, until <laughs> nothing exists in the world, we will continue doing the show as long as it allows us to. And today, uh, the series we go through, obviously Gintama is in the main rotation, Jujutsu Kaisen and Kuroko's Basketball all are in the side rotation, but today, it's all about Jujutsu Kaisen, because the new, as of when we're recording this, tomorrow, the new episode releases. <laughs> Season 2 yeah, begins. Yeah, literally tomorrow. <laughs> literally tomorrow. We record these on Wednesdays now, so well, I wanted to be, I wanted us to be all caught up on Jujutsu Kaisen so that we could start Season 2. So we're going to be, be doing that. We're going to be finishing off Jujutsu Kaisen episodes 21, 22, 23, and 24, and that's the end of Season 1. And by the time you'll see, you'll potentially hear this, Season 2 will have started, and then we'll be able to get started. We'll be always on a one-episode delay when it comes to Season 2, so that gives you plenty of time to actually watch the episode yourself before you hear us talk about it. Aren't we considerate, Zen? We are just amazing like that. We it has are... nothing to do with the fact that we just haven't done it yet. No. Yeah, yeah, no, obviously. It doesn't have anything to do with the Strategic fact that... Strategic value. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we always say. Exactly. Exactly. That We're all about strategy here at Shonen Archive. <laughs> you can not tell. And now, let's get into Jujutsu Kaisen as we end off Season 1. Technically speaking, this will be the the next series that we... Fi- the, the Technically, it's not the... It's going to be the third season of the seasons we finished. If you count Gintama, actually, it's technically like the seventh. Because we've gone through almost three seasons of Gintama, one of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, one of Chainsaw Man, and finally one of Jujutsu Kaisen right here. But we're, we're barreling through seasons, then. Soon, soon we'll have our first series complete <laughs> in in Shonen Archive. But let's start one with of, yeah, that's, one of these days. We'll get there. We'll, we'll get there. It's you know, turtle, turtle in the hair. Eventually, the turtle wins, <laughs> and the rabbit sleeps. So we're getting there. <laughs> you know, we'll get there. Uh, so let's start with episode twenty-one, Jujutsu Kaisen, which is called Jujutsu Koshen. Am I saying that right? Uh, I think so, yeah. Let's go with that. Episode 21, Jujutsu Koshen. Tell us what it's all about, Zen. So this is uh, an episode where we end the uh, Kyoto arc, where we see uh, the guy with the hand sword, whose name I never remember. Um, Haruta, apparently. Haruta, yeah. Uh, and they're talking about how uh, they didn't really, you know, did we succeed in the invasion or not? Because Gojo showed up, and then Nanami's there, um, still alive. And Haruta is like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill Nanami while Nanami's weak. And then Mahito shows up, and is like, no, <laughs> you're not doing that shit. Um, and then Mahito's like, yeah, I got the stuff. I got the stuff we were there for. And then we get a little flashback of. Uh, Ghetto talking to the Curse family about their plan. Uh, and then they're like, why don't we why don't we just get Sukuna on their side? And Ghetto's like, it's not that easy. Sukuna ain't just gonna do whatever you tell him to do. It's not it doesn't work like that. Um Nanami is like, you know what? I kinda get what you were saying about fighting. It kinda rules. I really like fighting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we get back to Jujutsu High. And they're talking about the stuff that happened. Everyone's kind of healing. Um, there's a really good scene where they're all in Megami's like hospital room, uh, and then Toto's there. <laughs> they're just like hanging out and like vibing with Megami. And I think is it is it a pizza? They get him like a pizza or something. Yeah, they get him a pizza and they're eating pizza. Yeah. And he's complaining about. And how then it's Toto not... is just like, "Yeah, my brother rules," <laughs> and he's just at the end of the bed. Um, and I think Yuji leaps from the window and Toto ends up chasing him. Um, the president is like, I think we should we should cancel the Goodwill event, I think. And then Gojo's like, that's not up to us. We need to decide if they want to, to do that. And so they decide, you know what, we're, we're going to keep doing it and we're going to 
choose what it's going to be. It's like uh, pulling a, a thing out of a hat, I think, to, to pick what it's going to be. Um, and they end up pulling baseball. <laughs> and uh, I think they imply that Gojo snuck that in there because both the principals were like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, because they they, everyone um, was expecting single battles. but Yeah, it was not and it big. ended up being baseball. Um, and they kind of have these little character moments where... They're like all up to bat and like talking about what their life plans and stuff and uh, like, um, they're just they're, it's the baseball episode. <laughs> they're yeah, playing the, baseball. They're playing baseball. Uh, Maki is the pitcher, and then they switch signs, and there's a good gag where the pitcher for the Kyoto team is Mekamaru, but it's just a pitching machine with his face <laughs> on it. Uh, it was really good. That was really um, good. Meg does a little bunt. And Gojo notices that, which is funny because it comes up later. Um, a very important uh, bunt for later on. Yes, a very important character development bunt. Um, and then they kind of are talking about Yuji and the old man principal's like, I don't, I don't hate him, but you know the rules are the rules, yada yada. Um, they end up uh, the the Tokyo team ends up winning because Yuji hits a home run right at the end. With a really good song that plays, I really like the song at the end of this. Yeah, really good um, music for these. Last yeah, and then so. there's the the two principals are chatting and they're talking about like they're watching these ants, and then Gojo walks by and steps on the ants that they're talking about, and they go to get mad, but then when he walks away, he did not kill the ants. His curse technique stopped him from touching them, mm-hmm. so he's hovering slightly above the ants as he walks off laughing like an asshole. <laughs> as as come to expect. <laughs> uh, and then in the end here, the Juju stroll is one where they ask, what do you prefer, bread or rice? And it's the same gag of Panda looking in the back as they answer yeah. questions. <laughs> and being upset that they didn't pick a Panda. Yeah, the, he gets upset. He's like, it's obviously bread. And then he gets upset because he's like, this joke is just so stupid. The showrunners are out of my ideas. <laughs> they don't know what they're doing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> which i thought was really funny yeah that's this episode yeah and also every student gets a little factoid when they go up to bat and These they're all very so, funny they're all very good oh you want to run them down real quick yeah me was is uh that she was letting a mango ripen in the fridge and now it's gone so somebody stole it <laughs> uh Momo's is just baseball experience 2L. I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's like Little League. Yeah, neither one of us know what baseball I, that I, means. I assume it's Little League because two L's and, and LL is Little League. Um, mm, I see. But I don't know. Uh, Kamo's is that he's practicing cursive and he can write his own name in cursive. Yuji's is an impression of a new type of ramen where he says that it makes him poop a lot. <laughs> Uh, Nobra is waiting on approval to get a credit card, and then it's a little caption that says it's not, not going to happen because she's a high schooler. <laughs> um, Mai's caption is that she hates mangoes, but recently got over it, meaning she's the one that stole the mango <laughs> out of the fridge. Uh, Megami's is that he prefers chicken breasts in uh, Nanban and chicken thighs in Oyakodon. Pandas is that he really wants to punch a zebra. <laughs> This one actively made me <laughs> stop because I was like, that's the funniest factoid. It's so later with Toto's, but I love this one so much. The watch the punch but he zebra. wants to punch a zebra. Yep, real good. Uh, next one. Uh, Maki's is that she hates protein powder. Toto's is that he won middle school baseball nationals with Yuji on his team and then it specifies that Yuji denies this is true. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then Inumaki is, is that he likes bread uh, for breakfast. He likes it with ham, cheese, and hot sauce. Fair. So, yeah, this episode is a baseball episode. It is a classic. The arc just ended and everyone is drained so let's just have a good time type of episode <laughs> the ones we've become accustomed to in gintama at this point <laughs> yeah pretty much uh but this is a really good one of those i uh, i like the the beginning parts here where first of all they show them back on the beach and it's really funny because they're all wearing like beach clothes <laughs> as the the as the curse dudes hang out in beach clothes even though they're having an extremely serious conversation i thought that was pretty funny 
I like how they, um, when they're trying to discuss Sukuna, they're just like, oh yeah, he's a bomb, but he's a bomb that hits both of us. So you only really unleash him when you want the maximum amount of chaos, because I actually don't know which side he's going to end up going. It's bad for both of us, really. There really is hammering home. This is a bad idea for everyone on any sides here, but we're going to be doing it anyway. Which I liked. Um, that part where he's uh, where they're eating pizza together is really cute, especially when he's like, "You should have brought something that I could have actually eaten." And then Nobu is like, "Shut up, eat pizza." <laughs> Just, yeah, <laughs> shut up and eat the pizza. Eat your damn pizza. No complaining when it comes to pizza. Uh, that's really good. I like that at the beginning. Uh, Yuji is complaining a little bit about how Toto seems obsessed with the idea that they went to middle school together. And then at the end of this scene, when he's there and he's just like, ah, oh, my brother, he really knows. <laughs> he really is a, knows a thing or two. And he's just like there, chilling, hanging out, trying to be there with the vibes is really funny. Because then he immediately runs out and they're on top of the roof. So he's like, brother, come back. I told you. I'm I, Listen, it was a weird time. I don't know what happened. I was lost in the moment <laughs> when we were together. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what happened during that brief time, but listen, I have my head straight on, and I'm not your brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Yuji was, like, uh, almost ashamed of how close they got. Yeah, he's like, because they were like, yeah, how did you get, yeah, they, they take him the tags, like, how did you become friends with that brute, like that, uh, <laughs> how, how? He's like, listen, man, I, I don't know, it just kind of happened, we were hanging around, it's totally a Grease-type situation where the two, <laughs> the melding of two groups have happened, and one side isn't 100% sure how it happened, it just kind of happened. <laughs> That's really good. The baseball game that they... I also like Toto's uh, speech that he gives talking about why they should continue going on. Um, talking about like strength and stuff. Saying that we don't actually know any of the people who were killed. Um, the ones who deserve to mourn are the ones who were actually directly affected by it. And we should just continue doing what we can. And trying to get stronger as well. Uh, he says like a re like uh, like an extremely uh, touching and smart things, and everyone's reaction is, "Oh man, I didn't know that he could do that." <laughs> Who knew he had a minimum to be like this? Um, and then of course the baseball game is really funny, especially when he's like talking to Yuji while he's being the pitcher, and he say he's like sad that he's he's not the one pitching him the ball. He wanted him to be the one to pit to to be his pitcher, and he's yeah, he like, wanted to be like a showdown. Yeah, he wanted to shit out. He's like, and then while he's talking to him, he's like, promise me for the for if it's at the final time that you'll be the one who does that. And he's not even able to finish the sentence because Nobu just like fucking knocks him out with the ball. Oh, yeah, Maki hits him with the baseball. Yeah, Maki, <laughs> no, I buy that. It's Maki. Maki hits him with the baseball. And it just says yeah. totally intentional. And everyone's yeah, going, and then nice. Like, nice pitch. <laughs> nice pitch. Oh my god, this fucking nice pitch. <laughs> nice pitch. And it's yeah, it keeps. It's not all at once. It keeps going around to everyone, like it, one at a time. Yeah, it's like the congratulations scenes in Evangelion, <laughs> where everyone's just like standing around. Everyone's like, "Nice pitch," and he's always like, "Brother, I never realized everyone hated you." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's like, "Oh my god, everyone hates you." It's so funny. Ever hearing everyone go, "Nice pitch, nice pitch, nice pitch, <laughs> nice pitch," it just nonstop. It's really funny. <laughs> um. I like the little uh, conversation between the two principals as they're both just like unsure of what to do. It's kind of being, it helps at least not justify, but at least show you where the old man's coming from. He's like, listen, I don't actually hate the kid. It's just that this is the way it has to be, unfortunately. And then they, when he starts talking about, they start talking about certain regrets that they've had in the past and they show uh, the other guy, the... Oh, man, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name right now. They show um, one of the cursed spirits. The one who is in the human one. How am I forgetting Maito? his... Yeah, Ma Maito. Yeah, they show him. Again, I assume this is all stuff from Zero where, that I have not actually seen yet. So the way Maito they talk, is not in Zero. Is it not? Oh, man, is it not Maito then? They look back and they say specifically there's regrets about certain things that we've done in the past and maybe we can... Work to... about, oh, Ghetto? Yeah, Ghetto, Ghetto there you go. Yeah. My bad. Um, we can work on it and kind of figure out what to do then and figure stuff out together, which is a, a nice scene between them. 
And then, of course, it gets almost immediately cut off by Gojo, because it's really funny how they were looking at these ants and talking about them. And uh, being the sneaker that he is, it looks like he stepped on them, but it turns like, nope, oops, I completely missed them. <laughs> They're fine. <laughs> it just looks that way from one angle, but nope, I'm working on a different thing. So that was fun. And yeah, and I also like the little moments in the baseball game too, like Mekamaru showing up as the the pitcher, uh, Momo catch. At one point, like someone looks like they hit a home run, and then they cut to her up in the sky as she's flying. <laughs> she yeah, catches, she catches it on her broom. Yeah, yeah, she catches it. It's like this is allowed because of how little ca- uh, outfielders there are. This is fine to use your curse spirit for this. And then I do like it even when they um, finally do score the home the the home run that wins them the game. They actually do show her trying to get the ball, and it's like no, nah, she even she even she couldn't get it from that high. <laughs> so it was actually a nice frame of reference of like, okay, yeah, we remember we set up that she's flying. No, even with her ability to fly, she could not catch the ball in time. So it counts as a home run. So really nice episode. I really liked it. I thought it was funny. The Juju Stroll was also pretty funny with how much it feels like <laughs> with the uh, the repeat of the panda joke, just uh, completely unrelated is really funny. And all the little tidbits about the, the baseball players was super funny. Um, and I liked it. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, yeah, it's really good. It's just a cute character episode, and they choose to do it with a baseball episode, which is like an anime kind of tropey thing. Um so they kind of they give us a lot of really good character stuff in a cute way. It was it was really good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a, we're 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 big fans of the baseball episode. One of Dragon Ball Super's best episode is when they played baseball. So mm-hmm. <laughs> if you if it, if you go that far in, you just know you typically that when if they're going to be playing a sport of some kind, it's at least enjoyable in some way. If any, if only to see the characters actually break the game and see how much the actual author of the of the game knows about baseball or whatever subject that they're covering, it's always really funny to me. They either know way too much or know too little, and both sides end up being funny. I think. And now let's go on to the next episode, episode twenty-two, "The Origin of Obedience," which, as I started this, I went. Did I ever read this? <laughs> and then by the, <laughs> and then by the end of it, I went, "Oh, I totally did." And now I remember <laughs> this arc. I actually uh, basically forgot about this arc until I rewatched it from here, and then finally it came back to me near the end of it. So let's talk about it, Zen. Episode twenty-two: The Origin of Obedience. Go ahead. Episode twenty-two: Our our gang gets sent out to investigate. Uh some mysterious deaths that happened at one of Megami's old schools, like his old middle school, I think. Um, the, all of the bullies like bow to him because we get the reveal that he was like the top punk at the time, and he would like would beat everybody up while he was in middle school. <laughs> um, as they're investigating the. The cursed uh, family is like reincarnating some of the curse womb paintings that they stole from the high school like treasury thing during the last arc. So they're forcing them into people's mouths to like reincarnate them. Um, the our trio gets like a lead that there's a weird bridge that's like people kill themselves at the bridge. So they go to check out the bridge and they don't see anything and they're like that's it's weird that there's not anything there. Um, but they want to hurry up and find it because like, oh, there's got to be a curse because it's, its success rate at killing people is 100%. Um, they end up looking around and we get a little information about um, Megami's sister, Sumiki. And Megami goes to like call his sister and can't and then we realize that the mission is actually, um, or, or he's like, the mission's too dangerous now. Go, go back and don't, uh, don't, you know, just don't, don't do it anymore. And then he goes, ends up going alone, because uh, he wants to try to figure out what it is, why it's related to his sister. But he doesn't want to risk the other two. But of course, they show up almost immediately. Um, when they investigate, they find like a little. Uh, it's like a barrier of some kind. Um, 
and they end up moving underneath the bridge and across the uh, small river because of the significant meaning of, of crossing something in Jujutsu. So they cross into the domain and they find a cursed spirit in there that's like a little whack-a-mole guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they fight him for a minute, but then one of the curse womb paintings arrives and uh, Yuji goes on to fight him one-on-one while Megami and Nobara fight the whack-a-mole. Yeah, and the Juju stroll for this one was... No, I don't think there was for this one. I know there's a next one. There is one for the next one. Because I remember the next one. The next one is the, the, the one where they think he's getting hit on, so I don't think this one has one. Is this one the one where they're uh, in school, where it's the Curse family, and they're like in a rom-com anime? No, that was previous. That was previous. Okay, we okay. talked about okay. that one. Yeah, okay. we're good. Yeah, I'm, pretty sure, yeah, I'm, yeah, that I'm one. pretty sure that this one is. Uh, there isn't one in this one. So let's talk about it. Like I said at the beginning, I had almost completely forgotten about this one, and it made me feel like, did I skip this? <laughs> because there's a certain level of my. Not the most- memorable uh beginning to the manga arcs for sure no no it it's not but eventually it gets me by the end i was like oh no way i do remember this because i started remembering the fight and stuff but i totally forgot in the beginning setup here um so it's kind of nice to actually see it as to go like okay let me try and actually figure out what the hell's going on here <laughs> i had that moment of like what's going on here i was trying to figure it out and i was pretty uh I was getting into it as I was looking through it. I like going back and seeing Megami's uh, time in his uh, middle school. I think it's really funny when he reveals, like... Because in the beginning, when it goes like, oh, we should go harass these punks. Show them what's up. That's how, like, they start when they get there. Because, like, we need to find some punks and harass them so that we can get some information. <laughs> and they see two punks and they take offense to what they say, but then they start bowing immediately. And <laughs> they both take it as, like... Ah, uh, yeah, they know what's up. <laughs> they know to yeah, fear they're, they, they do that. They're both, like, uh, posing, and they're like, ah, uh, yeah, we're just that good. Yeah, we're just so fucking good with this. And then it reveals that it's like, no, they're bowing to Megami. And then he very sheepishly, sheepishly says, like, oh, yeah, I went here. <laughs> and I beat them all. He's like, what did he do to you? He beat us all up. He's like, oh, damn. <laughs> so that was fun. That was funny. I like that bit. Um... I liked hearing the stuff about the bridge. I like them kind of trying to, like, interact with the people and say, like, <laughs> they do a very, like, delicate balance of, like, showing how they would handle a real person learning about this who did not previously know about it. And they do it of, like, um, under the guise of, like, oh, no, it's paranormal. Like, at one point, she's like, oh, my God, is seeing this bridge related to the deaths? And then they have to be like, I have to stress this so clearly they are, in fact, not related at all. <laughs> so unrelated. They may, may as well not be related at all. Just trying to make them make sure that they don't freak about, like, <laughs> they don't start freaking out going, like, yes, this is related. You are likely going to die and get be killed by this. <laughs> so I like kind of seeing that interaction right there. I kind of liked when um, Mahito's uh, screwing with that guy and he's, like, saying, like, uh,. He starts seeing, like, whatever's going on, please tell me. He's like, oh, he actually still can't see me. And then he forces him to eat the uh, the incarnation. And he goes, like, I'm going to need you to take a big gulp. And then they, he actually does do a big gulp. And that's how they cut away from it, which I thought was funny. Because <laughs> he goes, like, ah. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty good. I really like seeing uh, Megumi kind of get a little shook here when he hears about it and he starts like trying to figure out what he's gonna do um just because of the success rate he knows like oh yeah my sister is related to this and this is no good and he's he like freaks out but he freaks out in like the most calmest way possible where he's just like oh yeah let me get on the phone talk to them okay okay what's going on here not good gojo away for another week that sucks <laughs> he's like putting it in his head like how completely screwed he is without actually like super freaking out but then when he actually goes to go do the thing is like okay so i just need to handle this my own no problem and he goes off and it's clear that he's in some ways completely shook and it's getting to him on a deep on a deeper level because when it's revealed that 
Yuji and Noboru were behind him because like you must be really frazzled if you are not able to detect that we were behind you this entire time. <laughs> So I like that, and I like the moment where they're just like, nope, we're going to help you. We just know that uh, things are probably bad. Doesn't really matter. We're going to help. That's it. And I really like that. I really like <laughs> their bond in general. I think they're a really fun three pair, especially with some other stuff that's coming up. I really like it when they're all together. It makes me feel, I, you would almost forget that for a vast majority of this time in season one, they've all been apart from each other. But then the second they come back, it's like, oh yeah, this is just good shit going around <laughs> i had missed seeing them all hang out because it's really nice and i think they play off each other very well and they all fit a very good dynamic together and yeah when they actually start fighting the whack-a-mole thing i thought it was pretty f i think the, the more f fights when the, the actual fight starts in the next one i think it's a much cooler uh because they actually show them fighting it and it's it's hilariously how detailed in the fighting is for this fucking whack-a-mole creature <laughs> creature is because they're going really crazy with it but we can talk about it in the next one but when that uh one of the death painting guys shows up and he's me like he's not related to this is he nope usually you got this he's like oh yeah i got this <laughs> and he starts uh powering up he's like don't worry about him deal with it and i thought that was cool so yeah, good uh, setup for a good setup for this like tiny arc that we got going on here, which is funny to say after me going on like I just d did not remember this is something I read back in the day, but <laughs> I liked it when I was seeing it for here. How would you feel, Zen? Yeah, really good. Uh, I like this earlier JJK stuff where it's still like monster of the week type of thing. Sort of where it's like. Uh ghost almost sort of like ghost investigators you know yes. like oh a creepy bridge where people kill themselves K kind um, of x-file-ish <laughs> in yes, a way very like x-files like uh paranormal studies sort of like shows um i i, I like when it has these vibes to it um obviously because it's real yeah. um at least in the show yeah of course uh we're so taking I, the I, I always stance here that all that this is actual of... also real of course Yes, it is. It's a, based on true events. Um, <laughs> of course. And I like, I find it a very wholesome moment when Megami's like, I'm here alone. And they're like, no, you're not, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> we, we knew you were going to do this, idiot. And they're just with him. Um, it, it's, it's a cute episode. It's a good start to, to this arc, for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I agree with you 100% on that. And now let's go into the next episode, which is episode 23, The Origin of Obedience, Part 2. Go ahead, Zen. So we are still fighting Whack-A-Mole Demon and the curse painting that is fighting Yuji. Yuji is beating his ass just a bit, just kind of whooping on him. He is uh, straight up whooping on him. <laughs> just, just whooping this dude's ass big time. Uh... They, Nobra and Megami are fighting the Whack-A-Mole. Um, and then Nobra is suddenly grabbed from outside the barrier by a big old hand that pulls her out. Um, Megami stays behind while Yuji and the Curse Painting both run through the barrier to get to the outside. And we reveal that it is uh, the painting. The painting's name is Kechizu. It's uh, Kechizu's brother who has pulled Nobara outside of the barrier. His brother's name is Esso. And so uh, Nobara kind of, they, they kind of do a little fighty thing where she like knocks a couple nails at him and he has a very Jojo-esque dodge where he like dodges with his hips. <laughs> he um, does. And the nails miss. And uh, they are, they're kind of like, you know, if you leave, um, then we won't we won't fight you. Like we just want the finger. I don't really care if we kill you. Like if you, if you just get out of my way, I won't kill you. And Nobra's like fuck you. Uh, Megami or not Megami. Uh, Yuji and the other one, of course, get out as well. So they're about to sort of all face off. Then we cut back to inside the domain while Megami is still playing Whack a Mole like big time. Yeah, the uh, most detailed like, animation for Whack a Mole you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, he's got like a sword, and he's got the divine dog that are all like fighting all the Whack a Mole stuff at the same time. Um, Megami puts together that the curse on the bridge was exactly the same time that Yuji uh, first ate the Sukuna finger, so he puts together that this is probably what 
it, it's another going to be another one of those things the where they found the finger last time, and it is in fact another one of those monsters. Um, the monster starts beating the shit out of him. Uh, it's way too fast for him. And he flashes back to some training that he had with Gojo, where he was like, you know, how do I get stronger? And Gojo's like, you know, I noticed that you made that sacrificial bunt in the baseball game because you don't mind sacrificing yourself to let others get ahead, but ultimately being a sorcerer is a one-player game. Like, it's not a team sport. And you need to be able to do this yourself. Uh... Because it's something like, uh, while you all may live together, you'll die alone. And so he decides that he's going to take a risk and push his limits to try to open a domain expansion. Which it is partially complete. It's not fully done, but it is functional. Uh, so the floor is covered in like liquid shadow, which creates a bunch of different uh, ones of his little shikigamis. Like the frogs and all that stuff. Mm. And... Megami runs in and starts boxing with this dude while the shadows are going on, and he's actually uh, winning quite a bit. And he's, like, able to use the liquid shadows to, like, slide him around and stuff. Um, he's able to make multiples of his shadows in here as well, because he makes multiple Nue at the same time that are blowing this guy up. Uh, the, the curse ends up dispelling the domain by shooting a lot of cursed energy out and he thinks he's like oh I, I did it I won and he's like laughing to himself and then uh, Divine Dog stabs it through the back and kills him he drops the finger and then Megami blacks out because he is tired and then we cut to Esso and Yuji and Nobra and Kechizu they're all about to start fighting uh, Esso shows his technique which is he has like wings of blood out of his back uh, and then he goes to basically they, they go to start the fight and they haven't really started fighting yet and the episode ends mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then this Guju, Juju Stroll is the one where uh, things are really hot out comes Yuji he says Megumi's getting hit on and like a hawk. It puts. It sends him. It sends Nobra. And it sends Gojo out into fucking squad formation B, as they immediately go up to him and say like, <laughs> "What?" They start saying like, "Are oh, you're? What are you doing here? Was it a lie when you said the time with me was the most enjoyable of all?" Like pretending like they all hooked up with him. <laughs> and yes. Gojo does. Uh, the it's it's definitely the most popular Juju stroll and probably the funniest one. Oh, the, uh, yeah, that bit where Gojo calls the other two home wreckers. Yes, and he's in, like, the button-up, and he's, like, glowing. Yes, it's <laughs> so fucking funny. It's so fucking funny. And uh, when... I, I actually like the beginning, too, because it's, like, Gojo and Nobra are, like, sitting there, and they're like, oh, the heat, I just want to die. And then you just... She runs up screaming, and they're like, "Go away! I don't. I'm tired. <laughs> tired for your shit." And then he tells them what's happening, and the very next cut is them all sprinting at full force <laughs> down the street. <laughs> so yeah, that that cut from them being super tired to them just like fucking running. It is like okay, formation like, B, sprinting full force. Yeah, and the fact that he also even gives out a formation, meaning he has multiple formations for specific <laughs> situations in which they fuck with him. <laughs> it's really funny. And then the ending bit where he says, like, hey, by the way, just follow here and you'll find the train station. And it turns out that he wasn't being hit on. Uh, he was just helping someone with directions. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes like you guys are you guys are embarrassing me what the hell are you doing and they both just stare at him as they <laughs> go it's the reason the entire reason they did this because they thought he was being hit on but it turns out he was just getting asked for directions now they look like bunch of, a bunch of fucking crazy people oh <laughs> uh, this one was really funny it was really yeah, every, it, yeah, it, it's the funniest one in my opinion for sure it is it <laughs> it it really does help us average just how much this crew together is just so fucking funny and uh, play off well together. <laughs> and hang so out. changes his shirt for this. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he like gets a whole new outfit just for this. Just for this stupid fucking bit. It's so funny. 
<laughs> so good. And yeah, this episode in general is very nice. Um, I really like how, again, with a lot of the fight stuff, it is always extremely well done. Even if they are fighting whack-a-moles or they're fighting some kind of weird... I don't even know what you would con- consider Kichizu, because he's just like a weird alchemist. Yeah, he's like stuff. a weird little gremlin thing. Yeah, he's, like, he's just kind of a weird little guy. That's the best yeah. way of kind of describing him. Little guy. <laughs> he, he really is. Just built weird. <clears throat> uh, but I like the fight with him. I like the fight with the mole. I like when they bring out, um, when Esso brings him out, they start kind of have a little back and forth of just like, hey, you can, um, we're here for the same thing, right? And he's, she's like, we're here for what now? And he goes, oh, awkward. <laughs> well, if you guys just leave, well, no one dies, we promise. And she's like, I don't know if this guy's an actual cursed spirit or just a dude. He's just weird. <laughs> like, there's something just off about him. And like you said, like the he Jojo poses and he goes and she she takes it as him not taking her seriously. And he's like, no, I just don't like people seeing the back of my back. Uh, if you see my back, I'll have to kill you. And then right at that moment, um, out comes um, Yuji and the brother and they both see his back at the same time and <laughs> freak out. Uh, Yuji freaking out because he sees the eyeballs on his back and the other one freaking out because he's like, oh, I know that makes you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> My bad, bro. <laughs> I didn't mean to do it. It wasn't on purpose. Um, I like that bit. Uh, when they're fighting, I think it's really... I mean, this might also come up with the fact that I like that Megumi is trying to find a way to kind of um, be better, as he, you said, the sacrificial blunt that he said, that he did. I think he says like if there's some there's a difference between dying for someone else and trying to die dying fighting or something. I wish I could remember exactly, but he says like specifically there's a way to f- fight and die and there's a right way of doing it and there's a wrong way of doing it and they're two completely different ways of doing it. Um he imagines like, a sh- he basically is like you can I don't remember the exact wording either, but he's mm-hmm. more or less saying like you can just give up and die immediately or you can give it your all even if you think it's it'll kill you and at least that way you tried your best kind of thing yeah yeah and when he does try his best and he's thinking of stuff he thinks of a stronger version of himself which is really funny because it did remind me of the one of the newer gintama episodes that we're gonna have to talk about where they said the best way to train is to imagine a stronger version of yourself (laughs) (laughs) yeah and he actually does do that here (laughs) so i just thought that was really funny (laughs) Um, and then when he actually is fighting, I really like when all the little ones come up, like all the little frogs, and he's fighting, and the way he just goes like, eh, screw it, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> like, that hands up in the area of him saying screw it, I thought was really good, and a good way of kind of just like saying like, eh, whatever. If I die, I'm already dying, I may as well die on my own, in my own way. Um. Yeah, well, Megami's thing has always been like, um. Running away. I'm, I'm gonna go for the guaranteed tie right Mm -hmm. like he's always been like oh i will go in and i won't win but i won't lose and that way you know whoever's left behind after the guaranteed tie will will be be able to win um and then gojo's advice kind of like pushes him to instead of going for the 100 percent tie go for the shot at the win even if it's risky Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so he goes for the the domain expansion instead, which is a very cool moment. It is. It is a really cool moment, especially as they're fighting. And I also like the end of it here when it looks like, oh, the domain got broken in. He's going to lose. But then in comes Divine Dog and he says, like, I this thing could scratch that thing's armor. You don't stand a chance here. And I thought that was very a cool way to end the fight. Is he's like, nah, it's over. <laughs> you, there's yeah, no... where he's literally like, if I can fight that guy, there's no way you can do anything to me. Yep, and he cool, was one hundred percent right. And then I also like the little flashback he has, where he's like on top of a bunch of punks that he beat up, and he gets scolded by his sister. And he starts talking about like how much he, uh, some of the things he hated from back in the day. Like he says, I don't like. Good. I don't like bad people, and I don't like good people. Uh, I just like r- people who don't go for anything. <laughs> Those are my favorite. Because the good people are able to forgive the bad people, and that just seems f- kind of fucked up to me. It just doesn't seem right. Um, 
And I also like in the past, he also sees him with Gojo. And as Gojo's kind of telling him about like what happened, he's like the way he's telling me this, he's doing it in such an assholeish way. <laughs> and they show they show Gojo in the past, and he's like doing this weird like little finger motion. <laughs> and he has he, a little finger move. Yeah, he has like this little finger move, and he keeps he does it like three different ways, and he shifts the way he looks both all three different ways too, which is really funny. He's like, of all the people to tell me this, why did it have to be this white haired idiot? <laughs> This is really good. And yeah, in general, I really like this uh, this episode. I thought it was a good way to kind of get Megumi. It's it's funny because when I think about it, typically with Megumi, when you look at the character that he would play, like let's go dip our hat back into the Naruto conversation. Megumi would you would be assumed to be either the strongest of them or the second strongest, similar to how Sasuke is, where he was at times the strongest one in the group, and also sometimes the second, depending on uh, what power level did Naruto currently just get, depending on the fight that he went through. But in this one, he isn't. He's, like, (laughs) the weaker of the three. (laughs) Yeah, sort of, at the moment. It's all, like, a mentality thing, which is cool. Yeah. Because in JJK, it's all just sort of, like, needing to be willing to take those steps you know yeah exactly like he's still trying to figure some stuff out and that's kind of clouding his head and i don't know it's really cool to see him kind of go through this and see the thought process and he also the way the battle ends i also like where it says like he went to sleep right afterwards just to let you know he's not dead he's just taking a nap real quick (laughs) because he needs it because he got fucking wrung out by the end of it because he's really fucked up like it was not an easy victory but he was able to win and I like that. And I like the setup, what is going to be the next fight, which will be the final episode of the season. But before then, let me ask you, Zen, what did you like about this episode? Uh, good episode. I love the whack-a-mole fight. I love the domain expansion. Uh, and I love the song that plays during the domain expansion. Yeah. Uh, super cool. The, the whole sequence of him doing the domain is sick. Um, top quality, like, just rawness, rawness and swag, a hundred. <laughs> yes, it is on full display, and they do that again in the next episode. And it's as cool there <laughs> as well. So they didn't. They like made sure all three members of the team got their moment to do cool shit while a song plays. Uh, let's go on to that episode then, Zen. Let's end this off. Let's end off season one, episode twenty four, accomplices. Episode 24, this is the final episode of, I believe, the whole season. Mm-hmm. Um, where we start off the fight between uh, Eso, Kachizu, Nobara, and Yuji. Uh, the technique from Keso, the, the Wing King, uh, is like shooting all this blood out. And so Yuji grabs Nobra and starts running, and he's, like, fucking Sonic running through the woods. And Nobra's like, how the fuck are you doing this? And he jumps out onto the freeway, and he does this cool little skid where he, like, slams into a guardrail to stop himself. Um, And then Kachizu jumps up and spits a bunch of blood, and Yuji pushes Nobra out of the way and gets coated in the blood. And then when Nobara goes to help Yuji, she gets shot in the back by the blood that was chasing them. Uh, we find out that his their their bloods are uh, poisonous to anyone who is infected. And so they have a time limit for how long they'll be able to last with the blood going on in there. But then Nobara re- realizes that she can use resonance on herself to hurt them because their blood is inside of her now. So she's stabbing herself in the wrist with her nails in order to hurt the two of them. Then they switch enemies, and Yuji starts fighting uh, Esso while Nobara goes to fight Kachizu because Esso's kind of banking on, like, all right, Yuji is winning against Kachizu, but I think I can let that fight continue and I can kill Nobara before Yuji kills uh Kechizu. that's what i have to do and then Kechizu uh is basically like crying as yuji's beating the dog shit out of him uh and so it, it kind of breaks esso's resolve who gets 
too worried about him. Uh, and so he ends up deactivating the technique almost in a panic. And then when he does that, uh, Yuji and Nobara switch enemies. And Yuji goes after Esso while Nobara goes after Kechizu. Uh, they both black flash the people that they're fighting in a very cool moment. And then Nobara kills off uh, Kechizu, finishes him off while Yuji and Esso keep fighting. Um, Esso tries to run away by grabbing some dude on a truck, and Yuji, like, whole ass just runs behind the truck and catches up with it. And then he ends up killing Esso by punching through his chest. Uh, and then we get a little flash over to Choso, who's another death painting. And they're playing a... It's definitely, like, an actual board game. Um, but they won't tell you. It's, it's one of those, like, I can't say McDonald's kind of things. <laughs> but I remember it being, like, straight up an actual board game. It, it um, looked a little bit kind of like a, either Life or Monopoly to me. Cause it yeah, like I think was... it might be Life. I'm pretty sure it's Life. Yeah, that, um, would, that would make sense. Yeah. And then Choso breaks one of the pieces because he realizes his brother's died, and Mahito's like, hey, don't break the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, eventually, they all find... Uh, they all like get together after the fight's over. They find Megami, and then Megami hands Yuji the finger. And he's like, like, take it, but don't eat it. And Yuji's like, okay. And then he reaches to take it, and then Sukuna makes a mouth on his hand, which eats it. <laughs> Very good sequence. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Megami's like, hey, did you... Or not Megami, uh, Gojo is on the phone. And he's like, hey, find out who that mole was. I'm pretty sure that we, we got a mole in the school because that's how the cursed spirits got in there to fuck shit up. Um, and then Toto and Meme put in requests for Yuji, Megami, Nobara, Maki, and Panda to all be bumped up to grade one. And then we kind of get like a little character moment at the end there while they're out like shopping together and Nobra's making Yuji carry all the shit. Um, <sighs> and then they find out they're to go meet up with Gojo for a mission and then we get a nice little shot of our, our trio as they walk away. Yeah, and that is to set up a secret mission that they're about to go do. And that's the end of season one, episode 24. Uh... Let's get right into it, because there's some things to say about here. As a big fan, as I've said beforehand in Shonen Archive, big fan of brother stories. I'm a big fan of these demon dudes. <laughs> brother is brother to me, and I felt the brotherly bond through this, and I was actually a little bit upset <laughs> when they got killed. And I was just like, oh, this, this kind of sucks. But I did like that Yuji immediately was like, hey... Can we talk about this real quick? <laughs> like, how do you feel? Because they realize very quickly that these death paintings, they're not cursed spirits. They have bodies. And they realize this almost immediately because his body doesn't disappear when she kills um, Kechizu. And then also the truck driver is able to, like, interact with them and see them. Like, they ask them to get off of the side of the road. Like, they can actually see them. Um... And also, at one point, when Kechizu is killed, his brother Esso cries for him, and he's not able to actually fully mourn him, and he has to immediately look to, like, leave. Um, and Yuji actually apologizes as he goes to kill him. He just gives him a very quick sorry, and then he finishes him off. Well, he's talking to Noboru about, like, have you ever killed anyone before, basically? <laughs> he says it in a... It's very funny to put it this way. But he does basically... Have you ever killed anyone before? <laughs> And she says, like, no, but, you know, he's like, so how do you feel about what just happened then? And she's like, well, it just kind of goes with the job. And this is just something you're going to have to expect when, if you're going to be a sorcerer. This is just kind of some of the scenarios you're going to be in. And you can't literally let it get to you or bad shit's going to happen. And he goes, yeah, I understand that, but. Today, we basically killed someone who was mourning their brother. And I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. And she just kind of does. She doesn't really try and like say like, hey, that, hey, don't worry about it. They were just monsters. She just kind of goes like, yeah, that did happen. So I kind of like the, the fact that they are doing some fucked up shit. And in general, I feel like this episode is something we've similarly talked about with Gojo. Where when Gojo is like in full power, it's fucking terrifying. And even in this moment, I feel more bad for the things that they're fighting 
just because it really does seem like they are completely outmatched, and <laughs> the way that they kill him is just fucking terrifying. The pure power that it seems that they'll be going after him. Even the way that uh, Nobara is fighting them, when she starts immediately like, oh no, I have your blood now, and she just like nails her hands down <laughs> to get them mm-hmm. to start feeling it, and so she can poison them as well, and his reasoning is like, well, we can never die from this, so we should be fine. Uh, I think, and then she's like, oh no, he usually has like built in immunity to poison. He's probably in a lot of pain, but that's not going to stop him. And then he immediately starts whooping, <laughs> catches his ass like immediately as he walks forward, unstopping, just complete beat down of it. And it's really well done. And like I said, when the double black flash happens and the music's playing, and I was like, oh my god, this is so... Um-. It almost reminded me a little bit of Metal Gear uh, Solid Revengeance, where <laughs> when things are super cool, like there's an instrumental version of the song, but then when things are really cool, then the J-Rock starts hitting. Like, <laughs> that's what it kind of reminded me of, and it makes me kind of sad that we're only getting a plat. We're getting a platform fight. I wish it was a platform fighter. We're getting a th- uh, arena fighter <laughs> instead of an actual Jujutsu Kaisen game because I would love to play like a uh, Devil May Cry style game. Oh, where- that would be sick! Like an action game. Yeah, like an action game where you could just do all this stuff and you could do crazy combos and shit like that. I would live for that. If this was the PS2 era Zen, we would have a game like that, but unfortunately we live in yeah. the <laughs> You're live e- in the shitty arena fighter era. You either become a 3D arena fighter or you get picked up by Arc Systems Work and become a 2D fighter. Those are your two main goings around. And unless you're Dragon Ball or One Piece, you're not allowed to go into any other genre, basically, because those are the only two that have been able to go into RPG and like turn based JRPG kind of stuff. But I lamented too much. Um,. But yeah, I really liked a lot of the sequence there and the fighting and the animation for it was on point at all times. I really liked it when the um, when the third brother kind of... It was funny enough, when I saw the third brother, I was like, I remember these dudes. <laughs> it suddenly all came back to me. I was like, ah, oh, now I remember this arc. I know where this is going. Um, I liked his reaction of he- hearing his... Uh, of knowing his brothers had died and being really pissed off. And I fucking also hated the Maito smile that makes it seem like that's what he wanted all along. <laughs> that feels like that was always kind of his end goals to make him as pissed as them as possible so that he would want them dead. Um, but yeah, I liked that moment. I liked when <laughs> the lady at the beginning, Akari, who which we did not really talk about, she tries to contact them <laughs> to figure out what the hell's going on because <laughs> she went off previously to go help the the lady who was like, giving them info about the cursed spirit with the bridge and stuff like that. So she has been away for a while and they weren't answering. And then at the end when they're just like, Oh, you know, I'm kind of hungry. She's still yelling at them, but she's like, you're completely ignoring me. Aren't you (laughs) like, you're not even hearing the the screams that I'm doing to you right now. It was funny to see her uh, pop up again. And uh, <laughs> when Yuji and Nobara find Megumi and he's not dead, they do like this. They, they do this a lot where it's just like uh, Yuji and Nobara just having a reaction with each other, but the reactions of them going, he's not dead. It's really funny. <laughs> where they're just like <laughs> putting their hands together, going, like, Oh my god, he's okay. He's gonna be okay. Yeah, when he, when he wakes up. <laughs> yeah. It's really funny. And yep, yeah, Gojo setting up everything was really funny. Um, I liked when they showed uh, Panda and his crew, and Panda's fighting May, and Panda gets like a point. And then they said, like, we have to start taking things just a little bit more seriously. And she's like, you know what? You're right. And she immediately starts whipping on his ass. And then the other one, <laughs> the other guy puts up a point up for her with her face on it instead of Panda to say she's awarded the point instead. <laughs> It was really funny, Maka. Uh, that was really funny. And, yeah, in general, uh, Toto and them saying, like, because <laughs> they make the, when they, the principal asked them, like, you know that the people who are in first year, like, first grade sorcerers are supposed to be the ones people look up to, right? So I'm going to ask you again, who do you think deserves to be grade one sorcerers? And then they basically list all the people that they don't want to be grade one sorcerers. Yeah. (laughs) 
Uh, which is really nice. And again, the when they're out shopping and he drops her clothes for she he drops like one little tiny article of clothes and that's enough for her to go like, oh, "What the fuck do you think you're doing?" <laughs> <clears throat> um was really funny and yeah in general i'm ready it's i feel like this is a good way to end your season where it's just like we have something to do later on yeah let's do it and then you show the team off and yeah into the sunset no juju stroll no need for that it's the end everybody thank you very much for watching we'll see you in like two years <laughs> uh, <laughs> it turns out when season two finally gets uh released Yep. But <laughs> I think it was about two years. Yeah. Well, well, to be fair, they had no idea that a pandemic was about to hit. So <laughs> you got to give them some leeway on this. But I thought it was a very good end of season. What do you think, Zen? Yeah, it's a great ending. Uh, the final fight is awesome. Music is awesome. Uh, the the little philosophical bits. And then I, re I really like the ending of just all of them kind of just hanging out. You know, just I like that they can be friends outside of like what's going on. They just go out and, like, do normal people stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is really nice to kind of see. Because it, it, it has been a while since these three had just been hanging out. So it's kind of nice to just have them hanging out with each other again. Uh, love this trio. Absolutely love. Similar to Chainsaw Man, where I'm just like, man, these two trios. I just love them so much. Yep. They're so great. They really are. They were they were fucking cooking <laughs> when these t three teams got released. I can't think of a more. Uh... No, well, to be fair, it's been a while. You actually read more of the more uh, new Shonen Jump thing, but it's been a while since I've had a three pair where I was just like super into it. <sighs> and yeah, with that, that's the end of season one. Zen, how do you feel about season one in general? How do you feel? About uh, really good. The mm -hmm. starts off strong. Um, a lot of great character moments in there. Great cast. Animation's really good. Uh, I really don't s have anything I super can complain about with it, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm pretty easy to please, but this this hit all the notes for me. Yeah, and you are also a, a big fan of Jujutsu Kaisen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Big and... old, big old fan of JJK. Yes, of course. And so am I. And this is my first time actually seeing the anime uh, after reading the manga stuff. And I thought they did a really good job with it. I think you've told me a couple things that some people have said about it that are on the more negative side. And uh, <laughs> thankfully, none of those things really <laughs> affected me in any kind of way. Uh, so I was just able to kind of sit back and enjoy it. But I really do feel like this is one of those adaptations that you know, dudes just want for their anime, right? Like, you can't ask for... I mean, you can ask for more, and I've seen people ask for more, <laughs> which feels <laughs> crazy. Uh, spoiled, even, to some. <laughs> compared to some... Compared to some adaptations that we will eventually have to talk about, where some of the anime maybe was not as good in terms of animation and following the story bits, <laughs> that this stayed as faithful as it was... And was super good throughout all of it and looked really clean and looked really nice. Uh, I think is awesome. And you, this is kind of what you want out of it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I was glad to see kind of a refresher of a lot of the early Jujutsu Kaisen stuff. Because again, we're going to get into with Season 2. This is the part where they kind of confused me for a bit. I'm kind of interested to see how the, it goes from here on out, but I don't think I've told you this before, but when they started the next arc um, that comes after this one, which is going to be the start of season two, I had no idea what the fuck was going on <laughs> for about like a couple chapters. <laughs> I don't remember I don't remember what happened, but I think it took me until like I think three chapters in for me to realize that we were set at a certain time. <laughs> and I was like, oh wait, is that what's been happening this entire time? So I'm kinda I'm curious to see it with an actual clear mind and being able to see it that way, because yeah, uh, some of the stuff that follows up until some specific stuff that in Shibuya, a lot of my memory is super hazy. So <laughs> going to be fun to experience it again and be like, OK, OK, let me actually pay super close attention and remember everything. Because like I said, by this point, they had changed a lot of the wording of Jujutsu Kaisen. So I was just completely fucking lost about how anything worked anymore. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's fair. Yeah, it, it's m- much easier in the later parts where all that crazy shit didn't happen. Um, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm very much looking forward to season two. These are my two favorite arcs in JJK back to back. So yes, and thankfully very they've, excited. they've given us a full like breakdown about how it's going to work out. So we'll be able to plan ahead and figure out stuff as well. <laughs> It looks like they're also going to be covering Zero in the specific things. Unfortunately, we were not able to get to Zero in time. But I have a feeling when I leave off for vacation, that's going to be the time where we'll just sit down and I'll watch Zero and we can talk about it before the events in it actually happen. I assume it's going to be like Demon Slayer. Um, Zero is a prequel. Yeah, I know. But didn't they say... Okay, let me see. Because did you see that schedule they had for the anime? No, did they say they were doing a Zero special first? Yeah, let me see, because a friend of mine linked it to me, and I said, like, oh, okay, I'll look it back at this, because I bet Zen has already seen this. And then I didn't know Travel. that you had, you had not seen it, so <laughs> let me go stroll back a little bit and see if I can find it. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, here it is. Jujutsu Kaisen TV anime season 2 schedule has been revealed. From July 6th to August 3rd, that's the Hidden Inventory arc. August 10th, recap of Season 2, Episodes 1 through 5, and the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero movie. And then recap. Oh. And then August 17th, recap of Season 1. August 24th, scheduled break. And then August 31st is start of the Shibuya Incident arc. So it sounds like by the time I come back from... Uh, yeah, let me see. By the time we, we usually, yeah, I'll be long, I'll be in Vegas by the time we wouldn't be able to record for anything. So I'll be back on the second. Um, by then they'll be, okay, we'll be back just in time for the, oh shit, we'll be, (laughs) we'll be back just before to talk about almost the ending and we'll be able to release the episode as the hidden inventory arc is ending. Perfect. And then, <laughs> and then after that, I think we can see the the zero before they they themselves start talking about it in the recap of stuff. I think that will be a good time for us to to have it. Yeah, yeah the, perfect. The, yeah, perfect. That works out. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Shonen Jump for breaking out the schedule. It helps a bunch, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, that is an interesting schedule. So. That's the current plan going forward, and as we said beforehand, we usually will record this for the when the new season starts, not for the one this coming up, but from every point forward, I will try and have these release on the day of, so you'll be able to see us talk about the episode one of season two, just when uh, you see it, the second episode of season two releases, and that will be the release schedule for the Jujutsu Kaisen Shonen Archives. And I feel like that will make sense. Oh yeah, I should be able to do that. It shouldn't be too hard if we're just talking one episode at a time. <sighs> okay, Zen. That's the end of Jujutsu Kaisen. Thanks very much, everyone, for uh, joining us for the season one, and we will see you guys when season two starts. <laughs> get ready, get hype, Zen. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, or as pe- when people are overhearing this today, or if they're seeing it like yesterday, and they're coming about this three years later, three years from the day you saw this. Potentially, who knows. <laughs> But either way, get hyped, and we will see you guys. I forgot. Now I have to actually end the show. I almost forgot completely. If you want to see more Zen, go to Zen's channel, uh, where he does uh, Shonen and Chill. I was about to say where you do Shonen Archive. You actually do your own separate Shonen Archive that's separate from my own. (laughs) Yes. Lots of Shonen around here. Yeah, a lot of Shonen around here. You go over to Zen's channel where he does Shonen and Chill. Where he talks about Shonen Jump manga. You can go over to my channel where I release a lot of Fago videos which support these videos because those are the videos that actually do super well <laughs> by YouTube standards. But the but these do extremely well for what the standards that we set forward, which is what we care about most. Uh, and occasionally remember to upload a, some other videos. I haven't, I said that this is the third week in a row where I've said that and I have not done that. So I should really look into <laughs> actually releasing it. I swear for when the. Uh, for when I'm away for vacation, there will be videos of various things besides just for go, but it'll be a mixture of things. But anyway, that's it, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you guys next week on Show Me Archive. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs>